Hello lovely people of YouTube and welcome back to Mark on Life. Now last week we were talking about the technical aspects of making content, so cameras, audio equipment, editing suites, all that kind of stuff. Now I want to get onto the creative side. So this week I want to talk about writing. So let's do it. So before I start, apparently, uh, the first thing you're supposed to do in any good vlog is to apologise for your hair. Not exactly sure why, but um, I'll play ball. Um, I'm sorry for my hair. Actually, mine does look quite long. It's getting to that sort of Wolverine stage, so should probably get it cut. Ironically, if I was Wolverine, I wouldn't even need to pay for haircuts. I could just, you know... But I'm not. Also, before we start, as always, I would like to thank everybody who watched uh, episode three of Real Perspectives, which was Predator. Um, I really, really liked um, doing this episode. I think it's the weirdest one yet. There will be weirder to come, I promise. Um, and if you haven't seen it, I will put a link in the description and I will also hopefully put a link somewhere here. And... Um, Please go and watch it if you haven't. So, writing. Um, for me, one of the most difficult parts of the process, writing is not something I do naturally. It's something I've done more out of necessity over the years um, to be able to have a bit of control with my career and actually put something out. I've never been a natural writer who said, hey, I must put my, my, uh, my thoughts onto paper right now. It's been more of, I want to make something, I want to create something, and this is sort of the way it has to happen. So the first part of that process is to um, choose the film that is going to be an episode of Real Perspectives. And the way I normally do that, firstly, is just the films that I love. As with any film fan, and anybody that watches films at all, we will have our favourites. And I have made hundreds of mental lists of my favourite horror films and action films and dramas and thrillers and all sorts of stuff. So I had a list of all my real favourites that I wanted to do at some point, um, which sort of go on to the next round before becoming an actual episode. Um, there were a few I absolutely knew I wanted to have in the first series, um, and the rest of them have become that. Um, also, some of them are different, like for example, next week, will be a Halloween episode and then will be a Christmas episode. So some of them are quite specific uh, and some of them are new. Some of them have been suggestions from people that have watched episodes and have said, what about this? And I'm like, that's a really good idea, better than mine. So I'll definitely be doing them. But truthfully, it all comes down to the, the movies that I love um, for a, a lot of different reasons. But generally the ones that over 30 years I have seen hundreds of times, no inside out and just really wanted to have fun with. So, when uh, a film has been chosen to become an episode, what's next? Um, the process is slightly different in each one, but I can tell you about the previous ones as an example. First thing I do, actually, is go straight to Google um, to search for behind-the-scenes photos. If you go really far back, there are less um, because it just wasn't a thing to take that many photos behind the scenes many, many years ago, obviously. Um, but most films you can find a good amount. And sometimes what happens is if you look at those photos, a story starts to form in there because the photos are quite odd. They show things that you, don't, you didn't get to see. And so sometimes that can be the beginning of the story itself. For example, um, in the behind the scenes photographs of um, the birds, which is episode two, hopefully you all saw it, there's photos of Tippi Hedren having a cigarette with like uh, one of the birds. And so instantly for me, that has this little storyline in my head of that the two of them were romantically involved. And then it just goes from there. Um, so like I say, sometimes that provides really, really great information and sometimes it doesn't. And the behind the scenes photos are pretty, pretty standard stuff. From there, the next step is the actual writing. Um, I don't tend to go straight, um, well not pen to paper anymore, um, straight onto the computer. Uh, 
I will often write a set of questions for this film that a normal interviewer would ask. So for example, if it was Predator, you know, what was it, what, what was it like working with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Or what was it like working in the jungle? Or you know, anything like that. Then write the answers to them and then move on. If a character has developed by then, then I'll move on to improv. If it hasn't, I'll keep going, usually. Some of them are really obvious and then they just click. For example, like I said, Bruce was the name of the mechanical shark in Jaws. Bruce, for me, instantly calls up an Australian character, so that was really quick. In Predator, the, the film was shot in, in Mexico, so he became Mexican. It, so it might have a direct link, it might not, it might take more time than that. Or it could be completely arbitrary if I think it's funny. If I think a character should just be from a certain country or a certain place because I think it's funny, that'll be the end of that. Um, but then we'll move on to, to improv. Um, I do quite a lot of improvisation in terms of comedy and performance and I find it way easier than just writing. Um, so you can either record it and then um, play it back to yourself and transcribe or just uh, improvise as the character for a few minutes and then remember the bits that you liked, the bits you thought were funny and then write them down. Um, either way is fine. Uh, but I find it so much easier than just writing, trying to be funny. You know, that's the worst thing is just trying to sit down and be funny. When actually it's much easier just to sit, be the character, talk for a while, keep going and then hopefully some funny stuff will come up. And more often than not, it does. Um, and then when I've got all that stuff on the page, then I'll just sit at the computer and try and write and um, give it some sort of semblance of, of flow which is the hardest bit. As I said last week, I have imposed on myself a five minute limit on these episodes because I've learned my lesson that putting out something of 10 or 15 minutes is quite a hard sell for people, particularly for comedy uh, on YouTube. So I've also discovered that when you write something, when it's performed, it often is longer than you thought it was. So if I write something and I read it on my computer at five or six minutes, it shoots at nine minutes and then I have a really hard time in the edit. So at the moment, my own struggle is trying to write things really short. And so I sort of developed a structure of how each episode is, you know, a nice sort of uh, joke based on the character at the beginning and then about three or four minutes of content. So definitely haven't um, mastered the art of this or anywhere near yet. But that's what I'm trying to do at the moment. Write it as concisely as possible so that the edit is a lot easier than it has been in the past. Um, I'm not going to go into editing because that's what I want to talk about next vlog. Right, so that's probably enough from me. I uh, hope that was uh, in any way interesting in terms of how I write um, the content that's going out for Real Perspectives. Um, again, thank you to everybody that's watched the, the first three episodes. Um, please, if you haven't, go back and have a look at them. I hope you might like them. If you have an extra moment, please remember to subscribe so I can make more stuff for you. Uh, and leave a comment or like any of the videos. It is hugely, hugely appreciated. Um, all there is to say is next week. Next week will be episode four of Real Perspectives, And it's a Halloween special. So... A little bit spooky, obviously. Um, hope you guys enjoy it. I will be putting out loads of stuff on social media before it goes out, of course. And um, that's it. So this has been Mark on Life. Thanks for listening. And uh, I'll speak to you soon.